This is a formula that each of us had to memorize in high school. But unlike other subjects, math is not about memorization, it's about reasoning. So even if you forget this formula, there is a simple way to derive it without any prior knowledge. Here is what I mean. So we all know how to solve linear equations, ax plus b equals zero. So just move b to the other side and divide by a. So x is minus b over a. So what if I have ax squared plus b equals zero? I can do exactly the same thing as for linear equations. So ax squared is negative b and then x squared is negative b over a. And then I'm done because x12 is just plus or minus square root of negative b over a. So these are called the depressed quadratic equations and I just saw that I can easily solve them. Now the question is if I have my standard quadratic equation can I convert it to a depressed quadratic? The answer is yes and the idea is to replace x with some other variable y minus some number selected carefully so that this linear term goes away. Replace x with y minus a square and let's see what happens. So in front of y here we will have plus by and here in front of y we will have a times minus two times a square. So we want these two to cancel out. Then the square must be b over 2a. Now I am done because I know that if I write y minus b over 2a instead of x and after I simplify, I will get a depressed quadratic. So that's it. I convert my quadratic equation to a depressed quadratic with the right substitution. Then I solve for y here and I need to find x at the end. So I use this substitution and this is how I get the familiar quadratic equation formula. We can go further and even solve cubic equations using the same initial idea. So let me write instead of x, y minus another number so that this previous term, in our case bx squared, is gonna get cancelled. So as in the quadratic case, I can easily figure out what is the right number to subtract here from y. This would be b over 3a here, y3 but not 2 as before just because I have power 3 now and 3 choose 1 is 3. So this is the right substitution and after I simplify I will get something of this kind. And as you can guess this is called depressed cubic. By the way uh, humans figured out how to solve cubic equations quite late in time. This happened uh, in the 16th century and the story behind that is really interesting so I recommend you to check out the link to the quantum magazine article that I left in the description. So how to solve depressed cubic equations? This is indeed the most difficult part here. We can replace y with a difference of two other variables. So this is counterintuitive because seemingly we make the problem more complicated, right? We, we introduce one extra variable. So what is the benefit? Well, the thing is, if I write y equals t minus u, I can use this formula for t minus u cube and then rewrite it in that form. And now this is pretty similar to my depressed cubic, right? Instead of y, I have t minus u. And if I just find numbers t and u such that this 3tu equals m and this guy u cube minus t cube equals n, then I would be done. The reason is that this equation holds for any t and u. And for my particular t and u that I found, this would hold as well. So basically this would mean that the difference t minus u would satisfy exactly my depressed cubic. So we just need to solve this system of two equations. But what is really cool here is that this boils down to solving a quadratic equation. And we already know how to solve this. This is indeed a quadratic equation in disguise because if we just write another letter instead of u cube, then we get a quadratic. So that was everything we need to know in order to solve cubic equations. So first get the depressed cubic, then solve this system. Remember that m and n are two given numbers that we know. So after we solve the system, we know t and u and that's it. Then our y is t minus u. Then we get back to the original form of our cubic equation to get x. We are not going to stop here. We can even solve 
degree four equations called quartic equations using the same initial idea. Let's see how. So as before, we can remove one term, in our case, the cubic term, and we get the so-called depressed quartic equation. Also, notice that we can always assume that the leading coefficient is one because we can divide by it uh, all other coefficients. So there we go. We just need to solve this depressed quartic now. So we need to do something more clever here. So we introduce this new variable alpha and write our equation in this form. So our goal is to pick alpha so that this expression over here is a perfect square so that we get a difference of two perfect squares. This would be enough for us because we will get the difference of these two expressions times their sum. So in this way, we will just need to solve two separate quadratic equations. Okay, but how to pick alpha so that this is a perfect square? Well, just the discriminant of this expression must be zero. And if we write this down, we will see that we will get a cubic equation for alpha. However, we already know how to solve cubic equations. So that's it, pretty much. We figure out the value of alpha. We make the determinant here zero, so that is a perfect square. We apply the formula for the difference of two perfect squares, and we solve two quadratics separately. So this is how we can solve the quartic as well. Thank you.